Hello everyone. In this video, I will demonstrate an example of groundwater simulation with processing mod flow. Let's go ahead and create a new model called Exercise 1. Before running the simulation, we need to clearly define the problem, that is to input all the data model flow requires to run the simulation. Please note that we need to make sure the units of different quantities are consistent with each other. In this example, I choose meter and second for length and time respectively. So for instance, the hydraulic conductivity should have an unit of meter per second. Let's first generate the grid. Select the grid and mesh size. In this problem, the aquifer is 20 meters thick, 500 meters wide, and 600 meters long. We would like to partition the aquifer into one layer, 25 rows, and 30 columns. Also, we set the top of the aquifer at the elevation of 20 meters, which is equal to the thickness of the aquifer. So the bottom of the aquifer lies on the datum plane. Click OK. Next, we need to define layer properties. Here we will just use the default values. You may look into the user's guide to know more about these options. Next step is to set cell status. Choose I bond. Right click a cell. We see the default value of the cell status is 1. This means the cell is active. If we change the value to minus 1, this means the cell has a fixed hydraulic head, so mod flow will not change the hydraulic head at this cell during the simulation. In this problem, we want to assign fixed head boundary conditions to the west and east boundaries, so we need to change the status to minus 1 at all the cells within the western and eastern columns. We can use this duplication button to copy the value of the current cell to other cells. And then we need to set time options. This problem is the steady state problem, so we just need to tell the simulator that the simulation type is steady state, and that is all. Next step is to set initial and prescribed hydraulic head. For steady state problem, the initial head is not very important. What's important is to make sure the boundary conditions are correctly assigned. In this example, the head at the west boundary is fixed at 35 meters and 25 meters at the uh, eastern boundary. For the region in between, we can just give an initial guess, say 30 meters. Select the value and the reset matrix. We can assign a head value to the entire layer. Now we need to change the hydraulic head at the two boundaries according to the boundary conditions. At the west boundary, the head is fixed at 35 meters. At the east boundaries, the hydraulic head is fixed at 25 meters. If you double-click one of the cells, all the other cells with the same value will be highlighted. This is an easy way to check whether you have assigned 
the hydraulic head correctly. Now we will set the most important parameter, the hydraulic conductivity. I would like to show you a heterogeneous aquifer in this example. So let me first generate a heterogeneous field. Select the tours and the field generator. Here we need to provide some geostatistical descriptions about the field we would like to generate. If you don't know much about geostatistics, it's okay, just use these numbers. Now the field is generated. The data are written into this file called field. Let's go to parameters and select horizontal hydraulic conductivity. Choose value and matrix. These are the default values of the hydraulic conductivities. Let's replace them with the values we have just generated. Locate the file and open. Now we see we have a heterogeneous aquifer because the hydraulic conductivity at different cells are different. For effective porosity, we can just use the default values. In the final step of the pre-process, we deploy a pumping well in the aquifer. Select models, mod flow, and flow packages. Here we can add many things to the aquifer such as evapotranspiration, recharge, and well, select the well. Right click the cell where we would like to add the pumping well. Input the injection rate. Because this is the pumping well, so we need to input a negative number. Click OK. Now we have input all the necessary information about the aquifer into the simulator. We are ready to run the simulation. Select models, mod flow, and run. Just use the default settings. Now the simulation is completed. After the simulation, we can check the results. Use this tool called Results Extractor we can see any results that we are interested in. For instance, we can choose hydraulic head and click read. This table shows the hydraulic head at all the cells. You can save the result if you want. Another thing we can do is to check the water budget of the entire model or any subregions. Select the tours water budget. Basically, this tells us the amount of water flows in and out of the model and the subregions. First, let me define two subregions. Click this button to switch to polygon input method. Select a part of the aquifer, right click. We'll define this part of the aquifer as subregion number one. Click this button and OK. Similarly, define the rest part of the aquifer as subregion number two, right click.
switch back to cell by cell input. Double click so we can see the two subregions. Yes. Click OK to compute the water budget. Press any key to see this report. This is a report of water budget. Please pay attention to this variable called discrepancy. If this value is zero, it means the mass conservation condition is satisfied within this region. But usually, a very small number that is close to zero is also acceptable. But if you do observe a very large number, this implies that there's something wrong with your simulation. At the end of this report, you will see this flow matrix which tells you the flow rate between the subregions. Finally, we can visualize the simulation result with a tool called PMPath. For instance, we can show the contour lines of the hydraulic head. Select Options and Environment, choose Contours, make it visible. You can adjust the contour levels if you want. Click OK. Now we see the contour lines of the hydraulic head. Also, we can display the flow paths. Make sure this button is depressed. Right-click at any position within the aquifer to set an article. We can track the flow paths of these particles. Delete them. We can use this function to display the capture zone of this well. First, let me change the color of the particles to blue. Select the cell that represents the well. Let's put 20 particles on the circle that is around this well. The size of the cell is 20 meters by 20 meter, so I choose the size of the circle to be something similar. Also, we only need one circle. Click OK. Track the flow paths of these particles backward, so we see where they are from, and this is the capture zone of the well.